Indian beekeepers of New Mexico. How are you guys doing? Not a big podium kind of gal, so I'm going to move around if that's okay. Thank you all so much for the chance to be here with you today. Um, we're here to talk about one of my favorite things to talk about, and that is small business. Uh, I am a small business owner myself. But first, I'd like to get a sense of who we have in the room today, first and foremost. So, uh, do me a favor if you already have a small business. Doesn't matter how big it is, but raise them high. Oh, okay, so we've got a good number. How many folks in here would do not, but would like to start a small business? Okay, excellent. Anybody who doesn't want anything to do with small business? <laughs> All right, awesome, sir. Thank you for identifying. So, really, um, here's what I uh, will try to bring to the conversation today. Uh, I'm sure that there is a huge amount of collective wisdom uh, that I could uh, extract from this wonderful group of folks who many of you already have your own business, and so that's good for me to know. I come to the conversation as in a couple of different ways. So um, first, I myself am a business owner. Um, I started the Leach Consulting Group, where you're now about to enter year five, and we are a management consulting and business strategy organization, and we focus primarily on community development. So a lot of our clients are nonprofits, educational institutions, social enterprise organizations, uh, we're Albuquerque based, but we have a team of consultants across the country and we work nationwide. Before that, I was actually a small business lender. I had the pleasure of working for an organization called Acción that provides uh, microloans and small business support. So I'm curious in the room, uh, who has heard of Acción? Awesome, that's always great. Love to see that. So, nonprofit organization, it's one of several here in uh, Albuquerque, actually, that serves the entire state of New Mexico. Um, with small business loans and support. Um, so I did that. I was there for about eight years. Uh, and I also have taught. Um, I'm honored to be a Lobo. Everyone's a Lobo. But we love the Aggies too. I know we've got some Aggies, I think, in the room. So we're friends with Aggies, but we are Lobos. Um, so I teach at UNM. I've taught entrepreneurship at the undergraduate level and then um, teach right now in the MBA program, nonprofit management. So I wear a couple different hats, and that's how I come to the conversation today. What Jesse and the wonderful folks at the board asked me to do was just go through some really um, important fundamental mechanics of how to start a small business. And so um, I've boiled this down to its most essential elements, which I'll show you in a second. Some of this, for those of you who raised your hand when I said, who has a small business already? This is going to feel a little repetitive for you. Uh, and so what I'm going to try and do is intersperse a little bit of uh, additional content, now that I know we've got a lot of existing small business owners in the room. And the way I'm going to do this is you're going to see I'm going to take us through five steps. At the end of every step, I'm going to stop and check in and see if folks have questions. You know, we've got a good 45 minutes. And so I plan this so that it's, we've got just as much time for discussion and questions as we do to hear me talk. And hopefully a little more time for questions, a little less of me talking. Okay? Now, here are the five steps that we're going to go through. Um, I think for anybody who wants to start a small business, uh, you really can boil it down to a couple of essential, five essential elements in terms of the actual start of the business itself, the initiation of the business itself. Let me mention that this PowerPoint presentation, Jesse told me this will, um, she'll make this available to you all, I think via the website, um, or at the very least can email it to you. So um, if you're taking notes, awesome, and also know this will be available to you. And in a minute, I'm going to get some help passing out a resource guide that's got some of the content in it as well. So really what I'd like you guys to do is sit back, listen, and think about what questions you have so we can have a really great discussion. Sound good? Cool. Ah, oh, small business. So, message to you, number one, uh, is that small business is many, many things, but when I boil it down to its most essential elements, these are the things that come up for me. And I'm curious for you all who are small business owners in the audience right now, if there are any of these images that really relate for you, that connect for you. The roller coaster ride, the learning experience, and the buffet. Anything relate or resonate for you? I heard some laughing in there, so there's some, some resonance maybe. Yes, sir. Scare oh, a picture that's scary. Okay. Well, people who don't enjoy roller coasters don't always enjoy those. So, it, 
Yes, ma'am. In the woods. In the woods. Oh, yes, in the woods. Sort of a meandering path, indeed. You cannot see where you couldn't cannot see the forest through the trees, as they say. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. A casino. Hmm. It can indeed feel that way. Yes. A rolling of the dice while you're on a roller coaster, trying to choose from the buffet. Right. I mean, it can be that too, all at the same time. What's that? Yes, exactly. While you're learning, painfully. Um, very good. Well, it, you know, I will say. For me, small business has been all of these things. So I'm a native Albuquerquean. Um, I'm actually fifth generation to be to live here, fourth generation born here. My family on my dad's side um, showed up here in the 1880s and homesteaded near the corner of Fourth and Manal. And um, entrepreneurship has been a part of our family history, but but very informally so. Uh, my grandmother, my dad's mom, raised him as a hairdresser, and so I think her life looked a lot like all of these things all at the same time with a little bit of the woods and the casino thrown in there too. My first message for you all is that small business is many, many, many things. And for those of you who are in it, I'm here to affirm, you know, misery loves company in that regard, <laughs> that, that if, if you feel any of these things, you're probably doing it right. And for those of you who are headed into it or just starting, while there are some hard parts of entrepreneurship, I personally have never experienced either lending to small businesses, teaching small businesses, or being a small business owner, something that has helped me learn so many things that I didn't even anticipate I would learn. So first and foremost, my message to you is one of encouragement. You know, it's not about the size of the business, it's really about the heart of the business owner that I think determines success. You can have a very small business for, very many, for a lot of years and it still provide everything you need it to. I think the key is to make sure you keep asking questions and surround yourself with a community of support. So we'll talk about that today. So let's start at the very beginning. My encouragement to anyone who is thinking about starting a small business, or maybe you've already been in business and you're really in one of those places where you're trying to get a read on whether you should keep going or not. You know, maybe you've hit a point in your sales that you're not real happy with, or um, you've had a hard time getting that going, or maybe you're just a little frustrated with the paperwork, whatever the case may be. My message always is first and foremost, get clear. Get clear on your why. Why are you doing this? The answer may be obvious for some. I'm doing this because I need to generate more income for my family or I'm doing this because I think it's really important for my industry to be out there and be active. I am doing this because I'm retired and I really want to have a new thing to do. There's lots of whys, but I encourage you to get very clear and very explicit about your why. Why are you doing this? Don't judge the why, just get clear on the why. And if you can, write it down. Now I'm sure you've heard about business plans and strategic planning, strategic plans and all that good stuff. I will tell you, I am a small business owner, small business lender, and small business teacher who's not overly, um, I don't get overly wrapped around the axle about small business plans. Because I've seen really good business plans for businesses that actually never open their doors. I'm also aware of small businesses that are doing really well and actually never did a full business plan. What's important is that you just answer the most critical questions, and that's what I'm hoping I can highlight for you today in the starting part of business. For those of you who are now going concerns, if you'd like to talk more about what are some of the critical questions to ask yourself as you are proceeding in business, I'm happy to visit with you about that and share what I've experienced and also share some resources of people who are much smarter than I am who've thought a lot about this. But for all of you, I really encourage you to get clear on the answer to the question, what is my motivation? Why am I doing this? because it will help you make decisions and create goals for yourself that will let you know if you are where you are in the woods, so to speak. So that's step one. Get clear on the why of what you're doing. Because then once you're clear on the why, you can then proceed to some of the important mechanics. 
And I always encourage people before they've done anything else, and once they've answered that really important why, why am I doing this, to then get real clear on a couple of goals. And in particular, let's see if this is kind of pointy. Ooh, yes, it does. Um, this, this idea of a North Star. For me, the notion of a North Star goal is something that should tie to the answer to that first question you asked yourself. So, let me give you an example. I'll use me. So when I started LH Consulting Group back in the spring of 2013, I was really clear about a couple of core whys for me. Why number one is I actually wanted to sort of put myself back in that proverbial classroom. Wanted to learn. I'd been doing, working the same organization for about eight years, happily so. And I was really realizing that I was, I was ready to kind of mix it up again. So reason for me, number one, was learning. Reason two is income. So this, this is the sole source of, of the way I pay my bills and support myself. And so I had a couple of very fundamental whys. And third, um, really the mission of the, of the organization is very important to me. Working with communities that are under-resourced and helping with business strategy, management, consulting, um, practices that could grow the capacity of organizations that were serving those under-resourced communities was really important to me. So those are my three whys. And then when I get down to goals, I made sure that I had three goals that tied to my three whys. So every year since I opened, I have had a North Star financial goal. And that goal has changed over time, but I've always had a North Star financial goal every year. I've had a North Star learning goal. What is it that I want to learn this year? Or uh, maybe a new area that I might want to work in? And I've had a North Star mission goal. Is there some sector that I haven't touched yet, or is there a way for me to improve the service that I'm providing to my clients? And I organize my business around that. And secondarily, you got to make a name. Now, it's I'm the girl standing in front of you who used my initials and threw in consultant group, so not the most creative name on the face of the planet. But it actually took me a long time to get there. A quick suggestion for those of you who have not picked a business name yet: do yourself a favor and. This is obvious, but sometimes people forget to do this. Go make sure you get online. And not only Google the name, but also take a look at domain registrations. Because there may be a time when you're going to want to be online, even if it's not in the beginning. And you want to make sure that the domain name that links to the business name that you're thinking about, you know, isn't already bought in 17 different iterations. Those are my recommendations for the first two steps to start a small business. Get clear about your why, then write some goals down for yourself and make sure that they tie directly to your why, and then pick a name. Because everything you will do from this point forward that we're going to talk about now that gets now into a bit more of the mechanics will proceed from those three things. You're going to make all your decisions based on those three things. People are going to ask you, oh, what is your business? And you'll be able to say, even if you haven't registered yet, well, my business, LH Consulting Group, does X. And here are my goals. To be able to tell the story of your business soon and well is really helpful when you're talking to a resource person who we'll talk about in a minute, be a lawyer or an accountant, or one of your fellow beekeepers. Really being able to tell that story well I have to say, guys, was I realized a huge part of what uh, helped me do well in the beginning. I happened to be a newspaper reporter um, as by training. That was my first career. Anybody remember the Albuquerque Tribune? That's where I grew up. I grew up in that newsroom at the Albuquerque Tribune. And that was one of the most powerful things that I learned from the wonderful editors and writers who I got to work alongside at the Trib, is the ability to powerfully compellingly and clearly tell your story really helps you set down a path so that you don't get too lost in the woods early on. So I'm going to take a quick, quick pause before we go into step three. And again, we're going to start to get into more of the mechanics. And I'm curious if anybody has any questions or any reactions so far to what I've shared, especially those of you all who are already in business. Again, anything here resonate or not resonate for you? Yes, sir?
Great question. So, um, and so Craig just talked about um, the fact that he chose a business name, he you know, thought he had researched it, but then come to find out there's a gentleman in Louisiana who's using the same business name. So what do you do? Um, well, again, it, it, certainly to the extent that you can, we're going to back up from where Craig is for a second. It, it is why doing those Google searches, um, going through registered trademarks if you can, all of this stuff is available online, uh, is a good use of your time. And so do try, if you can, to think globally as well, right? We are in a global economy. Um, we've got, I think, Emeth uh, is one of the books that's back on the, the bookshelf from, um, um, from our wonderful bookstore friends. If you find um, that you have a name um, that is already taken, or somebody comes in behind you, which I have seen happen before, um, and ends up registering a name after you have, you know, this is where it's going to depend. It's going to depend on how, in, uh, how, to what degree, that business is infringing, essentially, on your ability to do business. So what folks can do is they can register the trademark that is the business. You could go through that work of actually registering the trademark. And I get a lot of questions about that. I'm not a lawyer, so let me be clear about that. Um, but here's what my lawyer friends and, and folks who I have come speak to my classes about these things. This is what they say. When it comes to, to going the extra mile of, for example, registering a trademark that is your business name, only go to that trouble if you've got the resources to stand behind that trademark registration. You know, if, if you are going to be okay with going to court and, and really stop preventing someone from using a name that is close or similar to yours in a way that's going to damage your business. What I have found mostly, because I'm actually in the same boat, so there is an LEH Consulting and they are an IT firm out of, I think, New Jersey or something. I don't know how, but I didn't see them. I didn't see them when I was looking at my name. I've chosen to just hold um, that first year just to see if I got anybody who emailed me and they were looking for IT services and I had to let them know, not me. And I haven't had that circumstance. Um, it really is, I think, a case-by-case -case basis. The thing that you have to be careful about in this world, in our social media and online world, is you need to stay vigilant about potential brand damage, is what I would say. So I do actually go out and every now and again Google search that other firm just to make sure they haven't been you know, sued, that they haven't been taken to court by creditors, that there's nothing that's happened that wouldn't somehow uh, mistakenly pick my name up in a Google search and someone think that's me. So I do do that. Every, I probably, I've gotten lazy about it to be honest with you, but at least once a year I do it. Um, so that's what I would suggest is, is, you know, if you're a very, very small operator, and I'm a business, you know, it's me and then I have a team of about 10 subcontractors across the country who work with me, you know, we're a pretty small operation. We've got a book of business with about 25 clients. So, you know, I haven't registered my trade work and I just do a lot of Google searching. But um, if you're a product, for example, if you all are going to go out and sell a product, sell your honey, um, sell candles, you know, those sorts of things, that's where, for my product-based businesses, sometimes I'll suggest you might want to visit with an attorney and just maybe get a quick consultation with an attorney, show them the profile of the other business, and get their opinion about whether or not it would be worth it to file a trademark and try and protect your business name, or if you should just change your business name. Does that help, Craig? I think I saw a hand. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. So, if you had found that the other company had a problem, what would you do? Depends on the severity of the problem. So, um, so let's again, in my case, let's say this other firm um, gets in huge trouble. Then, uh, from a crisis communications perspective, um, I might actually think about putting something on my website that makes it very clear we are not that organization. Um, I might do an email blast to my customer list, just saying, hey, heads up. If I were active on social media, which I have chosen not to be except LinkedIn, then I would, I would absolutely launch a Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat if I was on Snapchat. Although I think in this case, you'd really want to get out there on Facebook and Twitter. Again, just to make sure that people understand that's not who you are. Um, if you have, again, a larger business and you have a product where you're really concerned about brand reputation, that's when I think you need to probably sit down with an attorney and get some advice. Great. 
All right, so we've gone through the basics, uh, and now it's time to amass and assemble your team. And your team is who is going to help you all, and for you existing business owners, I think this is where you guys can very much drop into the conversation. Because wherever you are in business, likely it's never a bad idea to check in on who your team is, and do you have enough, and do you have the right folks on your team. And let me be clear, when I'm talking about team, I'm not talking about people who are employees of LH Consulting Group. This is, this is a, a, a you know, motley band of brothers and sisters here. You know, some of folks who are providing me pro bono help, some of whom I'm paying for help, some of whom I get together for lunch once a quarter just to check in and do some mutual um, support. But your team as a small business owner is so important because those lost in the woods moments can be so easy to find yourself in. So the opportunity is to figure out how you can guard against the inevitable isolation of small business. Because we get so busy working in the business that we sometimes don't leave time to work on the business or work on ourselves and support ourselves. So do yourself a favor and think about, do you have what you need right now in these four big areas? Financial, and that's accounting and bookkeeping, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Those are, those are different and related concepts, and I want to make sure we're clear about them. As a former lender, of course you know, I'm excited about numbers. Um, legal, what, and we've already sort of given some examples actually of where legal help can be helpful, and I've got some suggested resources. Marketing, uh, the infant school of marketing, but I'm going to give you some very practical things about what you're going to need right out of the gate, and moral support. This is not something we typically think about as a small business owner, but boy, it's important. Really important. You know, even if you're a small business that is doing, let's say, I don't know, $10,000 a year in gross sales, you're still a small business. You're doing $500 a year in gross sales. I don't care how much you're selling. It's important to have some support. So let me talk about the support part, and then we're going to dive into these three areas of technical expertise. From a moral support perspective, here's what I do myself. Take or leave any of it. First, I surround myself with a group of mentors. These were folks who had been in business before. Um, I chose folks who not only had been in consulting, I had a mentor who had been in consulting, but I also chose a couple of mentors who were really good at things that I wasn't good at. Uh, and was very clear with them about that. And said, can we meet for lunch? In one case, it was once a month for six months, and here's the list of things that I'd really like to get your help with as I start this business. I'll buy lunch if you'll give me the, the gift of your time. I also have set up, and I still do this actually, headed into year five, I have a monthly peer mentoring call with a friend of mine who started his business the same month I did out in the Bay Area, uh, and it's a different kind of business, but he and I check in and have peer mentoring calls once a month. Just to say, here's what I'm struggling with, here's what I don't know what's, here's, I, I'm in the woods, but I don't know where I am, can you help locate me? It's really helpful. So there's lots of different ways you could go about doing it. I just want to put it on your radar screen that it's a really helpful and important thing to do. The other areas that I want to get into some detail about um, are the areas that I have seen as a lender, in particular, really trip people up. And understandably so. You know, these are typically not things we actually learned in school. Certainly we learned mathematics, and maybe you took an accounting course um, in, in, in a community college or in college, but most of the time it's not stuff we've learned. So my message to you about all three of these areas, don't beat yourself up for stuff you don't know. Just because you go and file a business license does not mean automatically there is some sort of like a gift of wisdom that is now imbued upon you where you magically know all these things. You don't, and you're not expected to. But just get out ahead of these topics and make sure, again, you're surrounding yourself with some people who can help. So from an accounting and a bookkeeping perspective in particular, bookkeeping, when I talk about bookkeeping, I'm talking about your daily, weekly, monthly income and expense tracking. So this is the kind of work that involves reconciling, for example, your bank statement with your receipts. You should do that once a month, every month. 
make reconciliation is what accountants call it. And at the end of every month, you should make sure that you know what all of your expenses were for your business and what all of your revenue or income was for your business. And ideally, you're keeping those separate. So, whether you have started or you are thinking about starting, my big recommendation for you on this front, do yourself a favor, open a separate checking account for your business. And if it's a big enough business, open a savings account at the same time and get yourself a credit card. Now you're gonna have to register the business first before you do all those things. I'm gonna talk about how you register in a second, but this can really help in terms of bookkeeping. I have hired a bookkeeper. I already knew going in that I would prefer to spend my time doing client work than keeping track of what I'm spending and, and uh, what I'm bringing in. So I have a bookkeeper who does those monthly reconciliation, big breaks for me, and she'll create financial statements for me once a quarter. So I work closely with her. Then I have an accountant. My accountant is the one who, think of him, in this case it's a him, but it could be her, is, is really kind of the, the, the grand poobah. Of, of keeping an eye on how I'm doing uh, financially. I meet with him twice a year, mid-year to let him know how I'm doing, and then right before tax season so we can get ready to file my tax return. And he does my personal, and we'll talk in a minute about what this is, but also my Schedule C, which is a part of my tax personal tax return for my business. I really encourage you all to seek out, if you're not comfortable with accounting, filing a tax return, we're doing the kind of bookkeeping I've just discussed, I really encourage you to think about getting some help there. I can give you some suggestions and referrals for resources in both those regards. The second area is legal. It's worth your time if you are not sure, for example, what kind of legal entity you want to be, and I'm going to tell you what that means in just a second. That's where an attorney can be helpful. If you've not yet drawn up a contract for yourself, Let's say you are um, a beekeeper who will go on site and remove swarms of bees. You need to have a contract for professional services that you bring and you have a client sign that says, I'm here to do this job and here's the terms of our agreement. It's really helpful if you get an attorney to review that. And you could just have an attorney do a one-time review for not much money. So these are some of the things that I think are really helpful to get a, a, an attorney's eye on. And then finally, marketing. You know, uh, I hear a lot about marketing, what should do with marketing. It's a big, huge word. But again, breaking it down really simply in terms of just the start of your business, here's where you're going to need a little marketing help to make your business look professional. I really encourage that. So if you can, find a friend. That's what I did. Literally, I bought a friend dinner. And for dinner, he did my logo, <laughs> which was my logo for my first two years of business. So create a logo for yourself. Um, and then if you want a business card, again, you've got a nice logo to slap that thing on. And then maybe you create a nice email signature card for yourself if you do a lot of email. But there are a couple practical things that are helpful when you start to have done right away. Good, clear business name, a logo, and something that you're going to be able to provide them, whether it's an email address or it's a business card, something that lets them know who you are. This can also come in handy later down the road if you want to establish an online presence. I didn't create a website for myself for the first two years of business. I, I didn't need one. I wanted to stay pretty small and I wanted it to be only client referrals and repeat business. But when it was time to build a website, it was really helpful that I already had a group of friends who I had gathered around and let them know they're my marketing gurus. <coughs> So those are, these are the three kinds of resources that I want you all to be cognizant of. In addition to that moral support, finding some folks who can walk alongside you and share with you your experience as a small business owner. Any questions that anybody has about any of these areas so far? And in a moment, we're going to get into selecting a business entity type. So that's where we're headed next. Questions? For my existing business owners, how am I doing so far? Is this, is this paralleling some of your experience? Okay, I've got somebody in here and then I'll go back there. I want to say amen to the bookkeeping home for years. I had the bookkeeping kind of bad bookkeeper. I don't know that bookkeeping now. It's, 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 I wish I would have done it. Okay, 
All right, so cheers for bookkeepers. Get one quickly. And yes, sir? Why did you choose not to use uh, social media? It's a great question, um, and it's a long answer. Uh, there were some personal reasons um, for me that I didn't want to be on social media. Um, and, you know, I will tell you, it continues to be something I grapple with. I have a LinkedIn, a LinkedIn profile that's been very helpful and important that's allowed me to be out there. And now that I've got the website, it's very helpful. You know, it's, it, it's something I still struggle with because, you know, personally for me, it's, it's just not an um, environment that I'm real interested in participating in, but I recognize how important it is for some of my clients. Good question. We'll take one more and then we'll move. That answer you just gave, I used to work for a digital marketing agency in Phoenix. Yes, sir. If you're not social, you're not going to do it. If you, if you have to be social on a Facebook page or a Twitter page. You have to have that inclination or have some helper, mentor, or someone to help you do it. Because that's how it happens. You have to, it has to be active and moving or just die. No, it's a great point. You know, you really have to want that sort of thing. Interestingly enough, I'm kind of a, I'm a social person. And not um, all businesses are entirely, you know, geared to that, you know? Right. Like, I don't need to see certain things on my Facebook page. That's it. For me, it was, um, it didn't, it wasn't as necessary for the kind of business I was in. I was frankly also concerned about the resource. It was just me for the first couple of years, and I was concerned about not having enough time or resources to do exactly, sir, what you just talked about. Mm -hmm. To do social media well means you need to really stay on top of it. And I just frankly knew I wasn't going to have the juice to do it, <laughs> honestly. I don't know if that's a great answer, but it's an honest answer. I just didn't care enough. Yes, ma'am? Well, there is, there's personal Facebook, and then there's also Absolutely, an excellent point. Again, she, she highlighted and make sure, to make sure we understand there's ways to show up on social media as a business, only as a business, using things like Facebook business and other media. Um, and then there's the personal opportunity. So, excellent point. Thank you. So just a quick highlight in terms of, of some of the resources that are out there for you all. I want to highlight these two resources, and I've actually brought a couple of rack cards. Um, when I break, um, we'll give you a second to come pick these up. But um, there are rack cards here. Um, if you need some help on the on the you know business planning side, I think both West and the SBDC are really great resources. Um, they have classes, courses, and one-on-one -on -one consulting. From a legal perspective, I actually want you all to know that UNM School of Law has a business and tax law clinic that they provide um, law student law student staff it, and you can get some legal support for a very reduced fee. There is an income qualification, but you can get legal resources. Uh, as a business owner from uh, second year law students uh, at Axion, we partnered with them and they do a great job. And then finally, um, on the marketing side, I get this question a lot, like where should I go if I need a graphic designer or somebody to help me with the design piece? Um, we've got a local uh, chapter at the Professional Association for Design. They're a good place to go start and just ask for a membership list from them. And you can often find, oftentimes find a pretty low cost graphic designer also help to help be happy to uh, help with that use of names. All right, from an entity type, we're going to go through steps four and five uh, quickly here, and just check in if there are any final questions. So you've got a lot of you've got five choices. It's a lot to me, I guess. Um, you've got five choices when it comes to the legal entity type that you're going to choose. For the sake of time, I'm just going to highlight two because this is probably where you all are going to fit. I, for example. That's me right there. So I picked a single member LLC. Um, here's what you need to know. If you are somebody who is really not interested in any process whatsoever, you are also not concerned about there being a difference in the eyes of the law between you and your business, and you want to keep it as simple as possible, you are a sole proprietor. You actually don't even have to do anything. You are a sole proprietor, so by default. There are still some things you're going to have to do to register the business, but that's essentially what a sole proprietor is. You use your social security number, for example, as also your um, 
uh, like on your W-9 forms if you're doing some contractor work. It's the easiest and most simple. It is also, from a legal perspective, the highest risk because there is no separation in the eyes of the law between you and your business type. You are the same thing. You and your business are one. As an LLC, it creates a line in the sand legally, which is why I chose it, but it's still not too complicated. All you have to do is go file what are called articles of organization up with the state. I'll talk about that in a second. But in the eyes of the law, there is a separation between you and the business. Now, the good news is there aren't a whole lot of extras that you have to do as an LLC. So, on step five, registering, here's again really the highlights of what you need to do. As you're going to see in particular from a tax perspective, um, you know, if you are um, a sole proprietor or an LLC, you're going to file what's called a Schedule C on your personal tax return. Again, I get an accountant to help me with that. It's pretty simple. You don't have to file a corporate tax return, which you do have to file if you're an S Corp or a C Corp. So for a lot of you in the room, I think you're probably going to follow into one of these two buckets. You know, if you were a small home-based business, or maybe even you worked out of one of the incubators or accelerators here in town. For me, the single member LLC has, has worked really well for me. Um, I, I haven't needed to, to change into uh, a corporate structure yet. It's just not needed. But here are the things, these, and this is the last set of mechanics I'm going to go through and then see if there are any last questions. This is it, guys. This is literally the steps you need to take next. So if you're thinking about small business and you're in the Albuquerque area, apologies to Las Cruces, but I've got some guides that give you where to go. Um, and anybody from any other parts of the state. But let's say you're a business owner here. Same applies to city of Las Cruces rather than city of Albuquerque. You're going to go down to the city. You're going to act. You don't even have to. Get online, pay 35 bucks, you get a business license. They will send to you in the mail. Um, if you're an LLC or a corporation, but most of us are going to be LLCs, you're going to get online, you're going to go to the Secretary of State's office website. There they make it super clear for you. They even have a template of the stuff you got to fill out. You fill those things out. They have instructions about how to fill them out. You ship it off online and you pay 50 bucks if you're an LLC. Or if you want to actually expedite it, you can go up to Santa Fe and do same day registration for 150 bucks. Then on the tax side, there's just a couple of things you're going to have to do. You're just going to, I recommend, even if you're a sole proprietor, to get an employee identification number. It's just another number that you use rather than your social security number on tax documents for your business. That I think is important because in this uh, era of identity theft, I think it's really important to protect your social security numbers. Again, this is no cost. You can do online and they will, they will automatically generate an EIN for you there on the spot. The other thing you need to do is you're going to need to register with the state on the tax side because you're going to need to pay gross receipts taxes. That's our sales tax here in New Mexico. So if you're selling anything here in the state, um, within the state, you're going to have to pay gross receipts taxes. How often you pay those taxes is going to depend on how much business you're doing. You may have to pay monthly, like I do. You may have to only pay every six months, or you may have to pay once a year. Again, you'll see on the website, it shows you what the frequency is. But guys, that's it. That's really it in terms of how you start a business. It's those five steps. Get clear about your why. Make sure you put some goals down on paper that tie to your why. Get yourself a name. <laughs> Put your team together, and then register. That's it. So, I know we're right at time, so I want to make sure that I keep, keep you guys moving as needed. Um, so, why don't we do this? Ooh, give me what time it is. I'm going to hang out here. If anybody has any questions, please let me know. I'm going to take these things just so that we don't disturb. Um, I'm going to take these things back to the back, but I want you all to know these in particular, I want you all to make sure you grab one. This is an SBA